So the very first thing I want to tell you guys about is the Object Spy. Such an awesome, awesome tool that UFT has in here. This is unlike many others, like if you play with Selenium, for example, it's you actually have to go in and look at the HTML yourself. The Object Spy handles the parsing of the HTML for you. And the purpose of Object Spy in UFT or QTP is to help you identify an object and its unique properties so that you can perform actions on that object. So for example, if I open up Internet Explorer and I go to, and by the way guys, for all of you that are watching and want to play along with this, please feel free to. Our application, you guys can go on there and play with it as much as you want. It's very nice. It's There's a lot of dynamic things going on that, you know, you have to click on things in order for things to appear, and then you have to be able to navigate menus, and it can be a little bit tricky, so it's a very nice application to try and automate with. So you can go there and practice, no problem. You won't be upset. So anyways, check out Object Spy. When I click on it, what's going to happen is it's going to start recognizing objects for me, guys. You see these black boxes? So for example, here it's hovering over the search bar. And what is shown over here on the right-hand side? I'm gonna click on this for a second, okay? So I clicked on it, and now check out this object spy box. It shows us hierarchy of the objects. So there's a browser, and inside of that browser there's a page. That's our qtptutorial.net page. And inside of that page, there's a web edit. That is called S. And UFT went in and it parsed the HTML and got all of the properties for us. So for example, look at this. Disabled zero, let's look at this instead. HTML tag, it's an input. The name is S. Now, if we did not have object spy, what you guys would have to do is something like this. For example, in Selenium, whenever you guys are trying to identify an object, I'll show you how to try and identify it. So you turn on developer tools with F12. Then you do this. Okay, got my element. Look at this, here's the HTML. I have to sit there and deal with this. Look. It's an input, then it has an ID of S. It's pretty tough, right? What do you do with this? Then you have to know how to incorporate it into your code. It's a bit tricky, so it kind of adds an element to the fact that you'll have to learn HTML. But with this, you don't have to. It does all of that for you. Remember I told you guys it's an input, it's, it has a name of S. What else? Did it have an ID? HTML ID S, yeah, awesome. So anyways, so now I identified that object. I can go ahead and add the object to the repository. So I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna click this button. Or we can copy identification properties to the clipboard. So first let me add it to the repository. Next thing I'm gonna do is click this button to copy the identification properties to the clipboard. I'm gonna paste those for you guys so you see what they are. Boom, that's how they look. And third thing that I wanna show you guys is highlight in application. Very useful. If you click on this, see that? It shows you where the object is in the application. So now that we added the object to the repository, what do we do with it? Let's go take a look.